never done this before, so hopefully I do not scream into this accidentally and blast people's ears off. But okay, so I am going to talk about a project that I did with an REU student that was visiting the University of Cincinnati with the REU program. It is, uh, well, I'll, get, I'll talk about that more in a little bit. I guess that you can just use this. So the great thing about being one of the last people to speak is that most of you have already covered what I would have had to cover in the background information, so thank you. Um, but have to give, obviously, my shout out to Gibson. So the question that we asked in this project is, of course, very similar to his general umbrella question about what information is available, what information uh, informs our perception. And we, the piece of information that we were interested in was anything that we could find that was related to perception of sex. So we did this by creating point light video displays of several walkers. So we actually use six different people. I'll get to that in a minute. I think we all know what these are, but just in case you do not, these used to be created by painting glow in the dark paint onto ping pong balls, I think. Is that how it was originally done? Placed at all the major joints on the body. Now we do things very differently, but these are representations of individuals doing some type of movement. We focused on walking behavior in the study. And all that is shown on the screen are these little tiny dots. So I will be showing you lots of examples of the videos that we use in this study. But the great thing about this, especially when you are talking about a research study, attempting to figure out how we identify the sex of somebody that we meet for the first time, this gets rid of all of that other helpful information that we use on a regular basis. So there's no height information, hair color, none of that stuff. It's just these dots on a screen. So we thought these were quite appropriate for trying to answer this research question that we had. All right. So these videos have been around for a long time, and we know that there is information in these videos that can inform us about all sorts of stuff, all sorts of really cool stuff. So in these videos, and this is just a teeny tiny list of all of the different uh, variables, characteristics that we can identify. After we watch a video of someone walking, point light video, we are pretty good at determining how old they are, what their age is. We can also determine whether or not that person that is walking in the video is someone that I know, or is it a stranger. We can identify our own walking patterns. So if you're so shown a stranger's walking patterns, your walking patterns, you can identify that, hey, that's me, that's a stranger. Uh, we've done some affordance research in our lab, which I won't talk about today, but we can actually perceive affordances from these videos. You can perceive things like personality traits, so all sorts of really cool stuff. Okay, but we were interested in sex. That's the one that we were um, attempting to study. So if this hasn't sort of gone off in your head already, this has already been done, like many, many, many times, over and over and over again. I think we found 61 articles when we were doing our literature search background stuff that have done this already. But we wanted to come up with a new way to manipulate these videos and see how that impacted our perception of sex of the walkers. So that's kind of what our project was focused on. This is probably a good time to bring this up. So when I'm talking about sex, I do not mean gender. Even though these two words are used almost interchangeably in research, even as I just reread uh, re -read an article last night from 2014, and they were still doing it, sex is what your mama gave you. Gender is what you, um, how you sort of self-identify. So we are talking about sex, male, female. We did not look into, um, well, I guess I can talk about that one. Okay, so in this project development, which was so cool, I got to watch this young girl go through the entire research process, trying to come up with ideas. Okay, so we're interested in sex differences. How can we go about doing that? And bless her heart, every idea that she came up with had already absolutely been done. So these are just a few of the ways that we have manipulated point light videos uh, and seen or attempted to see how that impacts uh, sex classification. So, for example, changing the viewpoint of the observer. You will be seeing videos from the front and the side, so you're seeing the walker from the front and from the side, uh, but there's also all sorts of different variations of that, uh, varying the walking speed that the individuals are walking at in the video. So all sorts of di uh, different stuff, but most of these are process of elimination methods, so we've 
change one of these variables, see if it influences perception of gender. If it does, sweet, we know that that is something that specifies sex. If it doesn't, move on, we can eliminate that from being a possibility. So her idea, which was, I thought, one of the coolest things anyone has ever come up with, was she wanted to come up with a new method, a new attempt to try to identify what these characteristics are. And she said, why, don't, why shouldn't we just ask the participants? So ask the viewers what it is they're look. Tell me in words, when you look at these videos, how you're determining whether it's a male or female. And that's what we did. So every, most of the other stuff that we, uh, the different manipulations that we used, which to keep things simple for this talk, we messed around with a whole bunch of stuff. We manipulated the video view and the number of markers that were available on the screen, which I'll show you in a second. But again, this has already been done before. So I'll show you our results, which thankfully replicated the uh, research that's been done before. But then we found one new kind of weird, interesting thing that's uh, sort of the focus of my talk today. So we collected data from six individuals, three males, three females. This is an example of the torture that it is to be the person who's making these videos. If this, if Olip knew how many people have seen this picture of him, he would absolutely die. But, <laughs> so we put uh, markers on all the major joints of the body, put these people on a treadmill and film their walking for, I think we did about an hour of walking at whatever speed they wanted. So the actual walking speed in the videos is different for each participant, or for each uh, walker. So after we get this walking data, we do a whole bunch of stuff to try to make them as similar as possible, so we height normalize, but we end up with these six point light videos. Three males, three females. And I think I might have the stimulus videos next. So I'm going to show you, this is actually kind of a test, so hopefully you were maybe paying attention for the last minute. I'm going to show you a few example stimulus videos, and you have to guess if it's male or female, okay? I'll warn you that uh, the, I think one or two of them, the bottom of the video is a little bit messy, but what you're going to see is a point light walker. That you're actually going to be seeing this as the participant saw it. There's two buttons on the screen. We asked them to click male or female. Each video in the experiment lasted for around seven seconds, so we wanted to get four steps included in the video, and that was usually around seven seconds. These are shorter than that, but hopefully you kind of get the gist. All right. All right, that was a female. I won't make you raise your hands and you know do stuff like that. Okay. Raise your hand if you said female. You were correct. Good job. See, this is what I have to do in my stats class. I have to yell and give candy for answering things. Okay. So this is an example of the side view. If that isn't just blatantly obvious that, that that was a very tall male that was walking in that one, that was a male. So those are easier, I th well, maybe that's not the right way to say it. When we watch those two types of videos, full body and upper body, we're pretty darn accurate at determining sex. When you only show the lower body, that's when stuff starts to get bad. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, lower videos. So that was a female, and then I think the last one is the male, maybe? And that's a male. So maybe you felt differently, but I, it is more difficult for me to determine sex when I'm looking at these uh, bottom half or bottom portions of the body ones. All right, so those were the videos that we showed to these participants. We had dozens and dozens of trials that took them about 45 minutes to get through, but we had 20, ended up with 26 participants. And what we actually, uh, what we manipulated, or at least the data that I'm going to talk about, we did a few other things too related to personality traits, but these were our three variables. So we manipulated the view of the point light walker. You either saw that person from the front or from the side. We manipulated the number of markers. So full body, or you saw the upper half of the body, or the lower half of the body. And then we manipulated the sex of the walker. So like I said before, three of these were males, three of these were females. We ended up finding across all conditions, all walkers, all participants, on average, the score was around 70%. And by score, I mean out of all of these trials, how many did you answer correctly? 
This is I, from all of the literature that we reviewed, and she was an REU student, so I got to kind of make her review 61 articles that had been written before. Uh, we found an average of around 66% from those. So this is very, very close to that global average, which was really cool and really exciting. The angle at which the walker was shown had no impact on the results whatsoever. So whether you were seeing the frontal view or the side view, no difference in accuracy. The interesting thing that happened was this interaction between the sex of the walker and the type of video. And I don't want to get into too much detail because I really want to talk about what's going on in that lower body condition in a second. But sort of long story short, if they saw the full body video or the upper portion video, they performed it about the same accuracy wise. So that's, that's pretty cool. The upper portion of the body has as much information as the full body in terms of letting us figure out if this is a male or a female that I'm looking at. The lower body accuracy drops off pretty bad. So this is exactly what happens in the rest of the literature. It usually drops to around chance, so around a score of 50. And I'm going to revisit this in just a second. But the difference between the male and the female walker is what is interesting, or what interested us at least. We thought that you would have the same performance or the same accuracy for males and females, but the scores or the accuracy scores for male walkers were a lot lower. So I'll, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So we interviewed these participants, and oh my gosh, it was so much fun. You learn so much when you talk to your participants after you do research. So we interviewed them for probably maybe 10 to 15 minutes per student, and we had standardized questions that we asked them. But generally speaking, we tried to get them to say in words what, how, when they looked at that video, how did they decide that was a male or a female. It's not easy to do. So if somebody asks you that, it's sort of difficult to describe. But these were the percentage of the participants who mentioned each of these different variables. So posture, which is so cool, and I never would have thought that, 78% of them said posture. Hips and shoulders were big ones. That kind of makes sense, right? So there's uh, anatomical differences between males and females in these two body regions, so that sort of makes sense. Uh, how quickly or how powerfully they swung their arms, maybe that's not the right way to say it how quickly they were walking. We unfortunately still had a few people say things like, she just kind of walked like a girl, even though we tried to encourage them to not use like gender sort of. Okay. Um, and then a few people said they paid attention to the head marker. That's what they uh, looked at the most, which I thought was interesting. What's cool is that we know from previous research that shoulder and hip markers, for example, are useful. So that does give good information that helps you identify whether it's male or female. Walking speed, not at all. So the majority of the participants seem to be attuned to the information that they need to do this properly, but some of them maybe not so much. Maybe those ones that were paying attention to speed were the ones that performed a little bit lower. All right, so this is what I want to talk about. So we could not, for the life of us, figure out what was going on here. This has not happened before. We didn't find any articles that said this. We could not figure out why there would be these differences between um, the male and the female walkers. So we played around with data, tried to do some investigating, and found this. When female participants were watching these videos, this was their performance. So this is almost identical, the, exactly the same as what has already been found in the past. If you look at the male participants, when they see a male walker, they actually think that that's more, that that person is female. So that, I mean, that's not even a performance at chance. They actually are classifying that individual as being a female and not being a male. So that's weird, right? Maybe it's not. It's kind of uh, stereotypical. So we went back and we looked, and it's really hard to get this information from some of that literature in the past, and there are a few other people that found this. We thought it could be a power issue. Uh, it was an REU project, so it was kind of, you know, we went through it quickly. Maybe we made a mistake at some point. But there are other people who have found this. It just hasn't really been talked about. So we think this is fascinating. What it means, I don't exactly know. That's what I thought maybe we could talk about when we uh, do questions. But we found sex differences in perception of sex. If I'm writing this up as an article, that's what I'm going to be calling it. So when you are seeing someone who is the same sex as you, if you're a female, that doesn't really do too much to your accuracy. If you're a male, apparently you do not uh, pick up on that information that classifies that walker as being a male. So that's interesting. That also implies that men and women, males and females, rely on different variables when they are trying to determine someone's gender. 
sex. See, it's so easy. It's just like comes out naturally when you mix these up. So the next step would be to figure out uh, through some other type of manipulation what each one of these two groups are paying attention to. We wanted to do that with eye tracking research, but just didn't really have the time to do that. But that could be interesting. Um, and we're also exploring, how much time do I have left? Okay. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but we are starting to look into, instead of this sort of process of elimination manipulation stuff, we want to actually modify the kinematics of the point light walker and see how that influences um, perception of all sorts of different stuff, particularly affordances. We've done this recently using principal components analysis. That's the only thing I'm going to say about it because I cannot explain principal components analysis in less than five minutes. But a few people in here are doing this. So we basically take the uh, original video data, do a whole bunch of stuff to it using PCA, do some transformations, and we're able to manipulate the movement information while still preserving this actually looks like a person walking. So for example, we can make a individual who can jump really high in real life appear as if they could not jump very high based on this movement kinematic stuff. It wasn't really the best way to say that, but that's sort of our next step in terms of where we're going with um, manipulating this, this kinematic information and uh, variables. So thank you. That's all I have. This. <laughs>